1975, French psychedelic rockers So and Co released a self-titled album on the label Pathé, and from it, the track Tate de Moir. Okay, for the record, uh, this title translates to Skull and Crossbones. Yes. Okay, so far his voice is taking command. Um, yeah, these are the uh, vocals, I guess, of uh, Jake Braley, um, who, yeah, very, um, kind, of, kind of that growling tone, and he can also kind of do that high kind of howl. Wow, that guitar tone just took center stage, that kind of fuzzy, sort of enveloped, really like angular line right there, yeah. Hear that flexiton? One thing I, I got to admire already is just how much detail is going into the playing. It's like it's it's a relatively simple track, but everyone is like playing notes. Like you'll have like one instrumentalist, you know, playing like one line, the other kind of holding back and maybe just interjecting slightly. It's like like, well, basically, I just described the bass, you know, and the guitar right there. <laughs> I love that time. Yeah, envelope. Sound effects everywhere. Creaking, crackly sounds. Yeah, flexiton everywhere. Oh, I love the trade offs between that psychedelic guitar and that horn. Of uh, uh, flexiton, uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, vibra slap, vibra slap, yeah. <laughs> A different guitar tone now, more kind of like pinched, more like squeezed. <laughs> Uh, like Roger Chapman influence to the vocals in places. Oh, it's beautiful. All that growling and everything and barking and how it just collides with all these other sounds. Fuzzy and quirky and... How many sections have we gone through? It's only like two minutes, two minutes, 15 in. And well, this is the second uh, iteration of the bridge, acoustic guitar and. A lot of like sundry percussions going on. <laughs> Love those trade-offs. 
Yeah, it seems like every few, uh, every three seconds or so, the guitarist is, is coming up with a different, managing to get a different sound out of those effects. That really low, simmering, smoldering tone. I don't know if the vocalist is really singing any words at this point or if he's just kind of improvising, but it's that, that, that voice of his is just kind of a glorious racket amid all these other just sounds just kind of flying in like left and right. Being more brisk. Ah, uh, those those percussions are just so so many like squiggly, dotty, you know, swirly, zigzagged sounds. <laughs> that guitar just kind of like improvise go into almost like fractious kind of scaly like I mean that percussion <laughs> So and Co. Yeah, a really quirky track. Almost sounded like a bunch of toys had just come to life toward the end, especially. Yeah, uh, with uh, Jacques Brelli, bass, guitar, vocal, piano, Patrice Kramer, drums, guitar, percussion, Francois Ovid, guitar, piano, vocals, percussion, and Alain Potier, saxophone, vocals, wind. Yeah, real. So, um, uh, well, aside from the saxophonist, it was like uh, three guys playing just a bunch of instruments, you know. Let's hear another track from the album, Les Envers et L'Endroit. <laughs> Okay, a bit of a tighter song here, uh, more kind of playing in unison with a definite, like, kind of spiky vocal melody going on. <laughs> yeah. Vocals kind of buried somewhat in the mix. Well, kind of fainted this, dimmed this time in the... Very remote, you could say. I love the sound, I love the layers. Yeah, the bass is really kind of thick and frontal and, and really filling out the space. The guitars are kind of like uh, muted somewhat fuzzy, warm.
and I, I, I notice how the the subtle like like saxophone and guitar soloing is just kind of oh colliding in this murk. <laughs> sustained notes. Yeah, you hear them, you got you gotta kind of almost like tune out the bass somewhat and just pay attention to the notes that are colliding and waving around in the background. Uh, Okay, even if you uh, you speak French, I don't think you would be able to understand what he's saying. center is just so simple it's mostly monochordal throughout these verses and yet there, there's just so much sonic layering and detail and, and it's quite original <laughs> bands from this period that were going for such a troubly kind of fuzzy and almost kind of like hypnotic kaleidoscopic type sound um and yet and yet at the same time were, were so kind of like rudimental in their choice of chord structures and such <laughs> like this like golden middle between like psychedelia and post-punk and that never really happened um in the well in england anyway it, so it, it it over on continental europe sometimes you get this strange confluence of, of influences that you don't get anywhere else you get some styles that kind of like linger on past their time and continue to be explored like psychedelia and you get other sounds kind of previewed before like the english even thought of them i mean because like uh france was a bit ahead of england in terms of adaptation of electronic sounds and such <laughs> Somehow there's like a, a trace of Shanson in this too, because Shanson kind of got a little bit psychedelic in the early 70s, got a bit dreamy, lucid at times, and you would have these hypnotic vocal effects and such. <laughs> I guess maybe that may have been the template. It was like psychedelic chanson colliding with like funky hard rock in the mid 70s with some like sonic treatments that put it, uh, that were quite prescient of, of like kind of fuzzy, troubly sounds that you would be hearing during the post punk era within a few years. And, uh, but, but very unlike, but for 1975, very unlike anything that anyone was doing in England. The United States or us in the English speaking world, anyway. Yeah, that was a uh, Sullen Co. with uh, Le Inverse as uh, Lindroy, and before that, a Tete de Moir from their self titled 1975 album. They're the only album by this uh, French uh, quartet, although the guys, I guess, went on to other things. Um, yeah, Alain, uh, Alain Potier, the saxist. Uh, was on the 1977 Plat du Jour album, which has become quite popular on the internet. 
and also um, has been on some recordings by Urban Sax. Um, let's see, uh, Francois Ovid later joined the folk band Gwendol, and he was also in uh, Plat du Jour. Um, Jacques Brilly, along with a few of these other guys, was on that Ger Gerard and Tremont and Co. I, oh, I, and Co. I guess, yeah, all, all these guys were also on that. Um, yeah, that's that's an album I've known about for a while. I'm surprised I hadn't heard the So and Co. record till recently, as a matter of fact. And um, Patrice Kramer seems to have the most credits on here. Yeah, uh, what I just, oh, he was on some stuff by Robert Wood. Yeah, the uh, Vibest. Yeah, experimental vibist. Oh, and later on he was involved in at least one recording by Mylena Farmer. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. For more Rubies and Sapphires from the Sewin Co. album and many other great French albums from the 70s and 80s, see the directory of albums by French artists linked in the description below. Uh, more than a thousand albums strong currently with for like great one-off bands like this to lengthy catalog bands, you know, like uh, bands with lengthy catalogs like Ange, Atoll, uh, Mona Lisa. Um, yeah. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media and share the video and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard, the layers, the instrumentation, the nuances, the sound effects. Um, yeah, which moments stood out to you, the creativity of it all, how, the, just the, the originality of the music, the sounds, and, and just what, what they did with different effects and percussions and detail, and, um, and some comments on the lyrics if you could understand them as they went by you, yeah. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled trimaximalist, signing off. <laughs>